This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1372, How to Deal with Major Disruptions to Your Routine, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Friday, welcome back to Optimal Living Daily, or the OLD podcast. The premise is simple here, I get permission from authors to read you the best stuff I can find, covering self-help, minimalism, and more. Before we get to it, investing can be hard and confusing, especially with ticker symbols and charts flying back and forth on business channels like it's the runway at LAX. But why should something so important to your family's future be left up to the talking heads on CNBC? Enter the Motley Fool. They give you straight talk without the fancy jargon and noise you're used to. Their flagship service, Stock Advisor, gives you two brand new stock recommendations every month with daily analysis and coverage coming directly to your inbox daily. So what are you waiting for? Go to www.fool.com slash optimal living daily to learn more and claim an exclusive discount only for listeners. And I have that link in this episode's description. For now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. How to Deal with Major Disruptions to Your Routine by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. We've all gone through times where major changes come along to disrupt our routines. The birth of a child, the death of a loved one, having to move, getting sick or injured, losing or changing jobs, and so on. It throws us out of whack. Our goals get disrupted, whether they're fitness goals or career goals or any other personal development routines, and getting back on track can be very difficult with these disruptions. How do you deal with them? Recently, reader John Pape asked, quote, I try to follow your advice a lot, setting small goals and living one day at a time. Recently, I had a baby, and there are so many unknowns right now, I'm not sure how to set personal small goals. For example, I was going to the gym in the morning, but midnight feeding and an ever-changing schedule makes that almost impossible. My child is only a couple weeks old, so I realize maybe there will be a routine someday, but I do not foresee it. I guess my question is, how should you adjust to big life-altering changes? change your goals, change your schedule, or change your expectations, end quote. I can testify firsthand that this ain't easy. A few examples from my life, I've had a few babies myself. Well, okay, I didn't actually give birth, but you know. And they change your whole life around, like all the elements of your life are Lego pieces, and they are the destructor of all creation's Lego. Illness threw off my work routines and marathon training several times last year. Each time it was difficult to get back into things. I moved to a new house in the last couple of weeks. I was forced to take about a week off of training. I usually train about five to six times per week and my work schedule was messed up for at least a week. My grandfather died last month throwing everything off. Not that I'm complaining about it, but it happened and it took a while to recover. Some projects that I was working on are still on hold. These are just a few examples from my life. I'm sure I could come up with a dozen more if I thought about it. And I'm sure you have dozens of your own examples. The question is, what to do about it. Are we going to stop with our fitness routines or work routines or any other routines or our goals every single time we face a major disruption? No, things will be disrupted. But if we really want something, we'll find a way to get back on track. I was able to continue to train for my marathon and beat my goal during my Honolulu Marathon in December. I've gotten back on track with blog posts and Zen habits after moving and going through my grandfather's death and resultant memorial service. How to beat the major disruptions. So how did I do it? How does anyone beat these disruptions and get back on track? A few things I've found to be useful. Number one, expect the disruptions and accept them as part of life. I'm not saying you should expect death or the loss of a job or other tragic things to happen at any minute, but do know that there will always be disruptions to your routine. Consider them bumps along the road, a part of any journey, and something that you just need to deal with and then get back on track. If you allow these bumps to stop you every time, you'll never get to the destination. But if you know from the outset that there are going to be bumps, and you know that it's simply part of the journey and that you have to overcome them, you'll get there eventually. Number two, always remember your motivation and get excited. Why did you have the routine in the first place? It must have been something important to you for you to have taken the effort to make it part of your life. If you were exercising, you must have enjoyed it and had a pretty important goal or reason to exercise. If you were saving money, there must be a strong reason to do so. 
Always keep your eye on that goal. Remember why you were doing it and get yourself passionate about the goal again. If you get excited enough about it, you'll go back. It's when you don't really feel like doing it that you have a hard time restarting. Number three, find a partner or a coach or a class. This is just one of the best motivation tips for any goal, but it's especially useful when you're trying to get back on track after a disruption. Having a partner for workouts or any other goal is a great motivation to get started. It helps that I have my sister to run with because when we make a date to meet in the early morning hours, I don't wanna miss that date and leave her alone outside while the sun has barely started its first cup of coffee. With business projects, it helps that I have a partner or I might never get started again when I get sidetracked. A coach or a class are just as good motivators, though personally I found a partner to be more convenient. Number four, start small. Yes, you've heard this from me so many times, it might as well be a mantra, but it's good advice for trying to get back into the swing of things. Don't expect to pick back up exactly where you left off, whether that's with exercise or diet or work or anything else. For example, if you were running 30 miles a week, you might start out with just 10 to 15 miles a week. Run three to four miles three times a week, just to start out with. It makes it easier to start out, and it's something you can adjust to easier. Once you've adjusted to this lighter schedule, increase gradually. Number five, allow yourself a break without reproach. When I moved to a new home last week, I knew I'd have to take a break from workouts and work. It wasn't a planned break, but once I realized how busy I would be and how tired my body would be from all the lifting and moving, I knew I'd have to take an unplanned vacation. And I told myself, this is a good thing. My body needed a break from training anyway, and my mind needed a break from work. And so I took the break, knowing it was good, not feeling too guilty, and knowing that I'd get right back into it as soon as the break was over. And number six, if all fails, start the habit again the right way. If you're just having a tough time restarting, you might need to start back from the beginning with the basics. Focus on just one habit at a time for 30 days, making it public, giving yourself rewards, finding a trigger, and being as consistent as possible. You just listened to the post titled How to Deal with Major Disruptions to Your Routine by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. Now, have you ever wondered how to invest or struggle to understand how to make your money work for you? You probably wanna hear about The Motley Fool then. The Motley Fool was founded 25 years ago in a garage by brothers, Tom and David Gardner. And in those 25 years, Motley Fool members got access to recommendations like AOL in 1994, before You've Got Mail was a movie, Amazon in 1997, before Prime Day was a thing, Netflix in 2004, before you were binging Stranger Things, and Marvel, now Walt Disney, in 2004 when Tobey Maguire was still Spider-Man. Every month, Tom and David each pick a stock and provide a deep dive and analysis exclusively for members of their Stock Advisor service. Members get exclusive access to the Stock Advisor website with daily updates that cut through the noise of the financial market. So what are you waiting for? Go to www.fool.com slash optimal living daily to learn more and claim an exclusive discount only for listeners. That should do it for today. Have a great rest of your Friday if you're listening in real time, and I'll see you over the weekend where your optimal life awaits.